United's CEO, the acting FAA administrator, and the Secretary of Transportation, and many others have mentioned Newark Airspace's troubles, but no one gave specifics until now. Let's find out what happened on April 28th on this episode of Taking Off. Hi, I'm Dan Milliken, and we're now learning that the ATC system broke down on April 28th in some of the busiest airspace in the United States, Newark, which is inside the New York City airspace. Let's dive into what happened. All right, let's talk first about the background, the airspace in the area. The New York City airspace is incredibly busy, and this includes several large airports, JFK for mostly large international flights, LaGuardia for the smaller but many domestic flights, and Newark Liberty International, about a 40-minute cab ride from Manhattan. I've done that trip many times. And when working in Manhattan, sometimes I pick Newark over LaGuardia for prices and other reasons. Now let's talk specifically about the airport. Newark, Liberty, and New Jersey was opened in 1928 on reclaimed marshland. It has become one of the busiest airports in the country with, with almost 50 million passengers in 2023 walking through those gates. 80,000 passengers daily through 900 flights daily. And after United Airlines Flight 93 crashed in a field in Pennsylvania on 9-11, the Newark Airport was renamed Newark Liberty in 2002. And for better understanding of the incident on April 28, 2025, let's give a simplified overview of air traffic control facilities and what they do. There's basically three types of ATC, uh, tower, approach, and centers. Approach is technically called Terminal Radar Approach Control, or TRACON. For example, in a busy metropolitan airspace, when a plane is about to take off, they're talking to tower. And very shortly after takeoff, like a couple of minutes, tower will hand off the plane to approach TRACON. And then TRACON has a very defined geographical boundary. And once the plane reaches the edge of their map, they hand off the plane to a center. The TRACON and center facilities will be in windowless buildings with rows upon rows of radars and computer screens. And if you can take a tour of a center facility or a TRACON, I highly recommend it. It was eye-opening what goes on in there. Then, at the simplest level, if I'm in a small plane taking off from a rural or non-towered airport, my first call might very well be to a center covering that whole wide area, so I don't even talk to a tower or TRACON. And understanding this structure will help understand what happened on April 28th. The airspace at the airport, at Newark Airport, is handled by the Newark Tower. Then a few miles out from the airport, TRACON, or approach, handles the traffic. Until recently, it was the New York City TRACON that managed the Newark area. But in 2024, the Newark section was carved out of the New York City TRACON due to staffing concerns at New York, and they were relocated to Philadelphia's TRACON. And when we're talking about this incident for Newark, we're really talking about the Philadelphia facility. Okay, United Airlines has a hub at Newark, their third largest in the country, and they use Newark for many of their international flights, which leads to the first news I heard over the weekend, which was United CEO Scott Kirby announcing the canceling of 35 flights a day due to government equipment failure and ATC staffing issues. And here's what Kirby said. Technology that FAA air traffic controllers rely on to manage the airplanes coming in and out of Newark Airport failed, resulting in dozens of diverted flights, hundreds of delayed and canceled flights, and worst of all, thousands of customers with disrupted travel plans. Unfortunately, the technology issues were compounded as over 20% of the FAA controllers for Newark walked off the job. And this was before it was publicly known about the April 28th incident. You, you see, as air traffic control, ATC, has faced staffing issues at JFK, LaGuardia, Reagan National, and Newark, the FAA has issued waivers on minimum flight requirements. 
At these congested airports, the FAA imposes a minimum takeoff and landing slot usage minimum. The airlines must use their assigned takeoff and landing slots at least 80% of the time to retain them. Failure to meet this threshold risks losing those slots to other carriers or new airlines as slots are a scarce public resource critical for managing airspace and airport capacity. The reason is to prevent the big airlines from hoarding all the slots without operating the flights. But with delays attributed to ATC issues, the airlines got a reprieve. The FAA waived the 80% rule until October 2025, with Newark airspace staffing being reported 54% below staffing targets. Now the airlines are asking for an extension of the 80% waiver through October of 2027. And, and just a quick note, as I can see the political comments piling up below, these staffing shortages have been years in coming. The waiver was created in 2024 due to these ATC shortages. The problem spreads far beyond one administration and is a decade or two in the making. According to Reuters, 75% of all delays in the national airspace occur because of the delays in the New York City airspace. The problems here ripple heavily across the country. Newark over the past week has had a ton of cancellations and delays. It's become a real problem area. There is movement in Congress to revitalize the ATC, which I'll talk about in a moment. Okay, so what happened on April 28th? According to the Air Traffic Controllers Union, NATCA, in a statement on May 5th, they stated, on Monday, April 28th, air traffic controllers temporarily lost radar and communications with the aircraft under their control, unable to see, hear, or talk to them. Bloomberg reports that ATC for Newark lost radar and radio signals for 90 seconds. Transportation Secretary Sean Duffy said on Fox News the incident was only 30 seconds, conflicting with the Bloomberg report. When the radar went dark and the radio silent, with all those airliners in the busy congested airspace, it created a very dark and troubling situation. And there were no backups. The controllers that were busy working all these planes, coordinating the dance of the airliners down the, the airways, full of passengers, they couldn't do anything. The screens were blank. The radios were out. They could only wait. Bloomberg also reported that now, following this incident, multiple ATC employees were placed on trauma leave furthering the short staffing issue and even more delays around Newark. And I don't really know what to say about the trauma leave for this incident. If you're an air traffic controller and can shed some light on why this 90 seconds or 30 seconds would be so traumatic for a controller, leave me a comment below. Now, was this outage serious? Absolutely. Were crashes imminent? Not likely. Airline pilots, especially flying in busy airspaces, are very aware of what's going on around them. If they suddenly lose TRACON, they can easily switch back to the last frequency they were on or switch to the upcoming frequency that they're going to. For instance, if they're close to being handed off to tower, they can just switch over to tower and talk. Or they could have jumped on the emergency frequency that we aviators call guard, and it's 121.5, if they need to. And if a plane was coming in from the east, they could have switched back to New York TRACON. For the west, maybe the prior frequency or center. What I take away is, sure, it's a very big deal, but it's more of a, a warning than a near miss. Warning to upgrade and update our air traffic control system. And as of this report, the FAA has not made a statement on this April 28th incident. Sean Duffy has taken the warning and stated that it is a sign of a frail system and needs to be fixed. The statement of the obvious award for Sean. He also has stated that he'll be announcing a plan in the next week to build an all new air traffic control system. So currently the FAA is about 3,500 controllers short of staffing targets. And it takes several years to properly train air traffic controllers. 
Congress is looking at a $12.5 billion bill to revitalize the ATC system. For example, paper strips placed on boards are often used to track air traffic in many facilities. When they do have computers, they're usually extremely old and outdated. On the FAA website, when you look at the potential computer update from paper strips, the new system looks to me like Windows 3.1. Seriously, this is right now on the FAA website. I guess if you're moving from paper, 8-bit is a big improvement, and I'm glad they're skipping DOS and going right to Windows 95. Throughout the ATC system, software was written decades ago. Facilities are outdated and inefficient. There's no doubt we need to upgrade our air traffic control system, and I hope Congress acts sooner rather than later, not making this a political hot potato, but for the sake of passenger safety, get some bipartisan good solutions passed and implemented in a timely manner. I know it's a big ask, but I think we should ask. NASA report on the 90 seconds of ATC darkness or 30 seconds, depending on who you talk to. If you'd like hardcore aviation content, check out our sister channel in the hangar. You can click right here. We've got a video with the chief pilot of an airline talking about if there is indeed a pilot shortage. So go check it out. And I'd also like to thank our sponsors like ClemensInsurance.net. Jerry there went to bat for me, saved me over $1,000 on my airplane insurance. And Marshall Protective Services, MPSProtects.com, Personal Protection Elevated. Links to them and others are in the description below. And if you haven't checked out our recent report, click right here and give it a watch. I appreciate you guys. Thanks again for watching. Remember, superior judgment trumps superior skills. Stay safe.